Chen, joining me this morning to discuss the official trailer for The Matrix Resurrections. It's Patrick H. Willems. Patrick, how are you doing today? David, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing really well. <laughs> I am also doing well and very excited to be talking with you. So yeah, it is Thursday, September 9th. It's basically the crack of dawn here in Seattle as we're recording this. And we have just watched the trailer for The Matrix Resurrections. Several times. Uh, se several times. And uh, this movie is coming out in December. And I wanted to hop on here and react with you because I think this is a movie you and I are both really looking forward to. Now, I want to give a couple caveats before we get this conversation off and, and to the races, okay? The first mm -hmm. thing is, uh, people who follow any of my work over YouTube or the film cast will probably be aware of the fact that I usually don't watch trailers. Uh, and the you, reason- uh, David, can I just say, you are, I would say famously, <laughs> maybe the only person on earth who deprived themselves of the joy of the Mission Impossible Fallout trailer. To be fair, you did save many surprises for yourself for the actual movie. But I don't, the fact that, that we spent like a year of everyone just freaking out <laughs> about this trailer and referencing it constantly, all, because it, it, it was one of like, you know, these sort of the great trailers of the past decade. Right, right. And you just sat there like clenching your teeth for a year, not doing it. And I respect that. Well, I mean, Fallout is a great example, but also there's many other examples like uh, pr probably Rise of Skywalker was probably one of the hardest ones. I did I did do the teaser for Rise of Skywalker, but like I, I didn't watch any of the trailers for like Last Jedi or anything like that, and that was pretty tough. Uh, but I, okay, why? I wish why, I could do that. Why? Why? So yes, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of work. Uh, why am I watching the trailer for this one? I don't know. I, I guess I feel like. Uh, this movie, the the Matrix trilogy, is one that holds a special place in your and my heart, and uh, it's it's actually kind of low key has become my most anticipated film of the rest of this year, and I, I I am this is one of the only movies that's coming out where I have no idea what even the premise is, right? Like I could have waited until. The tra I could have waited until the film to find out. And I, I gotta be honest, I've watched the trailer this morning. I still don't know what the premise is. <laughs> that is, I mean, my my biggest, most immediate reaction to the trailer is, I can't remember the last time I watched a trailer for like a big a big franchise sequel and had absolutely no idea what the movie was going to be and just how exciting that is. Indeed, indeed. Uh, it, it is exciting. It is exciting. So anyway, uh, that, that, that's one comment I wanted to make. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make is there are YouTube videos out there that are going to break down in detail every single shot of this trailer. Uh, that's not going to be us. Like we, we will reference certain specific things, but this is mostly just like a raw emotional reaction to what we saw. Mm -hmm. And then finally, uh, you can have access to the audio podcast version of this conversation that we are about to have at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Also want to encourage you to check out Patrick's superlative video essays over at youtube.com slash Patrick H. Willems. That's where you can find more of our other stuff. But uh, yeah, so just a, a quick shout out, uh, back me on Patreon for uh, cool bonus audio and video content and audio podcast access to conversations like this one. Thanks to all my patrons for making my work possible. All right, so those are my quick uh, preambles. Let's dive into our reaction to The Matrix Resurrection. So I, I'm just going to start by saying I got freaking chills watching this trailer. Like this was so emotional to watch this trailer. My heart is very full, like watching this. Like it stirs up all these memories. A and it also kind of made me worried about some of the directions they're going to be taking, right? But like overall, this was an awesome, just an awesome trailer. And mm -hmm. that evokes like all this nostalgia from uh, our memories of specifically Matrix One, that I think it's going to get fans super jazzed about this movie. Okay, those are my quick take thoughts. Your overall reaction? Same. So I had read the trailer description from when it screened at uh, CinemaCon, uh, like a, a mm -hmm. week or two ago, yeah. uh, and so and this sounds like it was very much the same trailer. 
So I kind of had an idea of what to, like, I, I knew it was going to be set to White Rabbit. Uh, I, I, I had read about a lot of the visuals, and so I'd been kind of, like, imagining, I'd been, like, concocting a mental image of uh, of this, because I, I have, again, I haven't been this excited for it. I know, I realize these are all marketing materials designed to, like, play on our emotions and, like, get us to spend money on tickets. I realize that. But, I, but that said, I still, you know, I don't care. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, but I, I hadn't been this excited for a trailer since, like, the Force Awakens trailer. I mean, that's the thing about these, like, Lego sequels. Uh, right. It's, it's, and, it's the return. Yeah, and let's let's define what Lego sequel is, right? Uh, this is a term that was coined by Matt Singer at Screen Crush, I believe. And yep. Lego sequel is basically when they bring people from the original film back to introduce a new generation of characters in that same universe, pretty much. Yeah. Right? Uh, Force uh, Awakens I, being a prototypical example of it. I mean, honestly, like, like that's kind of the ultimate example, but I think can it apply to basically just like any sequel that they just, that comes out like a decade plus after the prior film, like uh -huh. after it seemed like it was just like, it is kind of like the, like comes around in a next generation. And I, I will say, comparing this to other Lego sequel trailers, it's really what, what I find really interesting about this, and I mean, and this kind of goes, you know, applies to the movie in general, is it's while there are obviously plenty of references uh, to things from like the the previous movies, it doesn't seem to quite like if you look at like the Force Awakens trailer, it's kind of like checking off all of like. Here are the things you you recognize. Here are very 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 familiar things, right. and it looks and feels. And it, and it's like it's the kind of thing where it's like there's like there's the Millennium Falcon looking just like it always did. There's those characters looking just like they always did. Here is, I uh, here is like stormtroopers, like pretty much slightly updated, but pretty <laughs> much the same. It's it's like yeah. very much it's like, it's like it's meant to be like comforting, yeah. Uh, it, because it's like here is the things that you loved and they're back, and they still look like you remember. And the thing, the Matrix Resurrections trailer is, as much as there's stuff in there from previous movies, it's like, I, okay, for instance, uh, part of the thing with like The Force Awakens was like, it's gonna look just like the originals. Like the prequels looked different, but this will look like the original trilogy. And The Matrix Resurrections doesn't, like visually, is not just aping the original trilogy. The mm -hmm. uh, Not just the fact that like, they have a different cinematographer, John Toll instead of Bill Pope, but like the whole color palette is different. The uh, it's not the like super muted green tinted thing. It's like it's a, it's much more colorful. It's like the visual language of like like uh, the, uh, the the actions like there's stuff that's familiar, but it's it's different in a lot of ways. The characters look like Neo looks completely different. It's a lot of it is unfamiliar. Uh, instead of just you know hitting the easy nostalgia beats, and uh, which I think is you know I would never expect Lana Wachowski to do the the really obvious easy thing, and I but but it is the sort of thing where like a little bit of it is like at least for me watching it 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 it's exciting, but it also like throws you off a little bit because it doesn't look exactly the same as we remember. Mm -hmm, Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You you know it's interesting though. I'm not sure if that's actually true, what you just said, because... Oh. Or, or, or rather... So, The Matrix recently came out in 4K, right? Mm hmm And I feel like this looks a lot more similar to that release than uh, than, than it does to... Like, than it is different. Like, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, uh, where is all the green tint? Right, because because like the original was very like green tinted in many ways, but I think if you watch like the the recent like 4K releases, like they kind of redid the color grading in some ways, and it's like less green tinty and probably they... more similar to what this is from. Okay, from just actually, the... yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna okay. I've I I had a realization. I think maybe the third time I watched the trailer. Uh huh. Uh huh. About I think why it looks like it does because I'm as much as I know the recent 4K release it's like because when they did the I think 2003 remaster of the first movie they pushed it harder in the green tints to match the sequels because the sequels when they're in the Matrix is fully green mm, everything mm, is green mm. uh, and this does like there is so much more like bright like yes. warm sunlight in this yes. 
that we did not ever have in, in the original movies because at the very end of The Matrix Revolutions, when they reboot The Matrix, and the final image of the movie is this warm, like amber sunrise right. mm. coming up over the city. And it funda- like the, that last scene of the last movie fundamentally looks different and, yes. uh, than The Matrix had previously. And looking at this new one, I'm like, oh, this very much exists in, in The New Matrix that reboots at the end of uh, Revolutions. M- maybe. Uh, the- Maybe right. I, you you yeah. you're guessing. You're guessing, right? I I, um, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I should point out by the way that like Patrick and I will draw upon our knowledge of casting and things like that in this conversation. Obviously, none of us have seen the movie, but we're going to draw upon like things that we may know. And so, to be extremely clear, if you want to go into the movie fresh, you should not watch this video, right? You should not watch the trailer. Uh, just go in fresh, but like we we we've watched the trailer. We're gonna talk about it, and we're gonna draw upon like our knowledge of like the movies, casting things like that to to get into it. So, um, so on that note, Patrick, let's talk mm-hmm. about what you perceive to be the plot of this movie. Like in your opinion, based on what you just said, uh, you think that Neo is in the new Matrix, right? And and he's been there for decades, basically. Yeah, I mean, he's clearly grown older than he had been in in the previous ones, so presumably been there for a That's, while. His, it's no longer his residual self-image that's living in the Matrix, right? <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, the, the, the basic premise, which is honestly probably going to be just like the first half hour of the movie, is... He seems to be, he's Thomas Anderson. He is a guy who's been, who's going about his life. He's uh, visiting his shrink, played by Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, he's taken these pills, that these blue pills that he's prescribed, and then, and has these feelings and, uh, and, 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 and like dreams about some other life uh, and, and other stuff, and then somehow gets sucked back in but also the, the, it makes you you know wonder like because as we all know you know neo and trinity died at the end of revolution spoilers for an 18 year old movie uh who would be watching this that hasn't seen i, I, I don't trilogy? so i don't know like here is my perception of something that's distinctly possible okay this is why i got really worried watching this trailer mm-hmm. which again i thought was it's, it's like and just to be clear, even though I don't watch trailers before I see movies, I watch trailers after I see the movie. The first thing I do is I get home and watch the trailer. So I'm very familiar with how trailers work and like what a really good trailer is. This is like probably like an all timer trailer for me. Like just in terms of how excited it made me for the movie after I watched it, this is like up mm-hmm. there. Patrick, I see you sporting some Patrick H. Willems merch. You you oh. also have some. You're also wearing some important merch, right? May 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 I reveal this? Reveal the merch, man. Okay, uh, I mean to be fair, this next thing is not my merch. But if we're gonna talk about the Matrix, I put on my Matrix code pants. You can't talk about the Matrix without wearing them. Basically, it's not it exactly make sense to do that. It's also a thing where um, I have never uh, had the the courage to wear these Matrix pants outside of my apartment. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of seizing this as like okay. An opportunity to like a reason to wear them for something other than just yeah. sitting around and watching movies. All right, so Patrick, here is my interpretation of what is going on in this trailer. Okay, mm-hmm. is in the universe of this movie, the Matrix movies never happened in any kind of base reality. Like Tom Thomas Anderson is a guy who's seeing a shrink. He had these fantasies and dreams. Like a while ago, it was maybe um, you could call it like a, a fantasy that he used to cope with the harsh rigors of reality. Uh, it was a psychotic break of some kind that he's now heavily medicated for, whatever the case is. Um, that's kind of Thomas Anderson's life. Uh, so basically, in, in the my perception of the universe of this movie is none of the events of The Matrix happened, right? Like none okay. of the events of any of The Matrix movies happened. And then he sees Carrie Ann Moss... Uh, who plays Trinity. And of course, like p- people in the chat are, are rightly pointing out Trinity dies at the end of Resurrections. You, you said that as well. Um, Neo dies 
at the end of Matrix uh, Revolutions, right? Yeah, they're both dead. They're both dead. So it's like like, like physically in the real world. In the real world, they're, they're both they're both dead, right? So like, how how is this movie going to square that circle? Well, one way it's going to do it is, and, and the other thing that is I'm really curious about is how is this movie, if at all, going to kind of redeem, improve, you know, Matrix two and three, right? Which mm-hmm. You you and I may have a lot of affection for those movies, and I have certainly reconsidered them and appreciate them in a way that I didn't when they first came out. But I think they're largely considered to be failures, right? Matrix two and three. And yeah, the, the I, I mean well, artistic well, failures. They're box office successes, but artistic failures. Well, the third one isn't even much of a box office success. I I think that their general perception to the public is that the public didn't like them. Yes. Uh, yes. But hey, at the same time. You know, it was the same thing when The Force Awakens was coming out. The The perception, largely among the prequels, is that they were bad. Right. So, so, uh, so my, my big question, and, you know, we've seen with uh, TV shows like Loki on Disney Plus or whatever, that there are some things, and even WandaVision, like, it's possible to revisit older properties in a thing and, like, improve them by providing more context. Um, Rogue One being like Star Wars story, another example, right? Like mm-hmm. all these things that I just listed, they kind of you go back in time a little bit and like show you what was there that you didn't even know about. And yeah. so the big question hanging over this movie for me is, is this movie going to somehow retroactively redeem or improve Matrix 2 and 3? And I think that one of the ways it's, it may do that is by saying, by the way, those movies never actually happened in base reality. Like... Mm. Those movies never actually occurred. Um, it was just some extended fantasy of Mr. Anderson. And, but then... Wait, wait, wait. E- even the first one or just the sequels didn't happen? I, I don't know, man. I think even the first one maybe. But but I guess, I guess like, then the thing is, uh, throughout the course of this movie, like, he, he discovers, like, wait a second, maybe they did happen in some kind of way. Now, a lot of people are pointing out this shot in the trailer that... Uh, is, uh, is it is it the shot that I've been dying to talk about because I think it's the most important shot in the whole thing? Right. So there's a shot in the trail. Uh, you know, why don't we get why don't we why don't we get to this later? Okay. You're talking about the shot in which scenes from the Matrix One are playing on a screen. Is that what you're talking? Yes. About? Okay. Let's get to that later. Let's get to that later. But first, uh, let's comment on any other components of well, the trailer that we wish. Go ahead. Well, can I also just say in regards to the sequels? Uh, see, personally, I have. I have mixed feelings about Reloaded and Revolutions, but I think uh, my issue is entirely just with like some of the execution of the storytelling in Correct. terms of like at what actually happens in those movies. I think it's great. I think the I, I, ideas there, like I think what they're saying, is great. It's I uh, I would never want like the events of those movies like scrubbed from canon or anything like that. Right, like and right. and the thing is, I think those movies really, uh, especially because they, they lost a lot of the audience. Those movies are, are very much like a, what the Wachowskis really wanted to say with the Matrix in general. And I think I uh, I really do not think that Lana Wachowski is a person who's going to. Uh, sort of like back off and be like, well, you know, I'll just give the people like the easy thing they want. I think uh, I think she's doing exactly what, what she wants to do and ha- probably had like a good reason for returning to the Matrix. And and a big thing that I've been so fascinated by since this movie was announced is the fact that uh, novelist David Mitchell co-wrote yes. the screenplay. And uh, I'm a big David Mitchell fan. I've got, I think, all his books on that big stack over there he also did uh, a cloud atlas right which was directed by the yeah the wachowskis yeah. and tom tickfer i want to say to, yeah tom tickfer who is composing the score for the matrix resurrections um but i uh, but yeah but so he, cloud atlas is his most famous book but almost all of his books involve similar ideas to cloud atlas uh there are often split into segments with uh jumping from character to character or about like consciousnesses like you know transferring to to different bodies uh that sort of stuff they're not all like science fiction but uh but they but that uh that idea about you know our like uh you know 
a, 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 a mental self not necessarily being tied to to physical selves uh, is like like you you get why the you know like like based, looking at like the Matrix and the Wachowski's other work you you can see like why they clicked so well and uh, and so it, again I when you look at the move at, at the trailer and it seems like the, on its surface it's like oh okay so like uh, Thomas Anderson forgot about the Matrix and now he has to remember and like fight machines again I think there's probably so much more going on there than simply that. Right. Uh, and, 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 and people in the chat room, by the way, are very objecting to my prediction, which is completely fine. Um, they're saying, like, it would be inconceivable for them to undo the artistic vision uh, of uh, Broderick Gord's in the chat room. For his, 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 no way Lana is going to undo their artistic vision, which I think is is a completely legitimate point of view. Also, people point out in the trailer at around 12 to 13 seconds of the trailer there's a shot of what seems to be the robots repairing Neo's body. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this does seem to indicate that we are living in a post-Matrix Revolutions world where maybe they figured out a way to fix Neo and revive him back from the dead. Uh, you know, how Trinity exists, maybe it's like a Matrix version of her that he's seeing, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm also, is is I, open I, for question, yeah. And honestly, one of the biggest question marks for me is uh, Yahya Abdul Mateen the second? That's his name. Yeah. Um, but who looks like like Morpheus? Like when he when he arrives, he's wearing the the classic Morpheus sunglasses with no like uh, wings that just sit on the nose. Yeah. And um, but clearly they made it a choice to you know cast him and not just have Lawrence Fishburne reprise his role as Morpheus. And so. So that that's the thing where I'm like, this guy seems like Morpheus, but he's also n not the Morpheus we know. And so what right. is go like? And and then there's there's the shot with with him like, uh, you know, without the sunglasses in his bathroom, like looking at a mirror in, in a very kind of like unMorpheus way, where he seems like confused about what's going on. Right. And so right. Well, and, and well, there was like there's speculation that Yahya Abdul Mateen II plays young Mor young Morpheus, and like maybe. It's like older Morpheus reincarnated in his younger version of his body, and that he's looking at the mirror, being like, "Oh, it's younger me. I'm like younger me now, right?" Because clearly, what Re Matrix Resurrections in its title, and I think in a lot of his plot, it's going to be about like going back, right? Going back to like an earlier version of things. Mm -hmm. um, and is in this, fact, I think it's going to be like, is it Lost season four? Uh, that's about going back to the island? Uh, perhaps, perhaps. But I think that this is also one of the things that, like, uh, this this is one of the reasons why Lily Wachowski didn't want to participate in this movie, as far as I can remember, right? Mm -hmm. um, she's, she said in, in an interview, I believe, in uh, about not being involved in the Matrix uh, Resurrections, quote, there was something about the idea of going backwards and being part of something I had done before that was expressly unappealing. I didn't want to have gone through my transition and gone through this massive upheaval in my life, the sense of loss from my mom and dad, to want to go back to something I had done before and sort of walk over old paths that I had walked in. It felt emotionally unfulfilling and really the opposite, uh, end quote. And so I, I do think there is something about like, uh, you know, the, the limits to which we can extrapolate that a very heartfelt statement is like very limited to, to the plot of the movie. But based on the trailer, it does seem like, uh, but, but as FYI, that's why Lily Wachowski is not a director on this movie. But mm -hmm. it's also kind of like, it seems like this movie is about going back, revisiting the old, um, recontextualizing the old. And I can understand why that would not be appealing to a creative person. Um, yeah. So anyway. And 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 it also just you know, that makes sense to me. And it also the fact that Lana did want to go back because I, I what I always assumed is that um, you know as as the Wachowskis made various things that uh, had like mixed receptions by the general public, uh, I always kind of assumed that regardless of you know how people reacted to like revolutions, Warner Brothers probably just had like an ongoing offer to them like. Look, if you ever want to make a Matrix thing again, like <laughs> yeah. we and and there were all those those rumors for years about like, 
there might be a new like non Wachowski Matrix thing in development. Maybe like written by Zach Penn. Maybe Michael B. Jordan is going to be in it. It's like it's just one of those things that was like a big enough cultural thing, and uh, that like it's a, it's again it's just an IP that Warner Brothers had, and uh, and just the idea that that at this point Lana was like, you know what, I I like I would like to go back. Uh, there, there is like, I, I have a reason to do this. I have like a, a, a something, something to say, uh, and and that that makes me very excited, and and again, I just, I because thinking about like what the story could be, right? Uh, I think that's important context that you're bringing up, right? Is that this is a movie that theoretically might have happened without any of the Wachowskis, right? So, right. so I- I- imagine like what kind of story that would have been. It would probably have been somewhat meta, and it's possible this movie will be somewhat meta, right? Um, yeah, especially just the uh, again. Can can we talk about the images of scenes from the first movie playing on a screen in some place that a SWAT team is like invading and shooting up? Sure. Let me just say one other thing before we yes. we get to that, which is that I think my big cons- so. Here's why I'm super excited about this movie is the trailer, in addition to just being cut really well, the action looks incredible. And you know what, Patrick? After your viral video about why Marvel films look terrible, I can't watch a trailer like this and not be taken with how colorful it looks. How saturated and sharp the colors look compared to 99% of Marvel films. Uh, Yeah, I mean, hey, look... Uh, this movie is shot by the same cinematographer that shot, honestly, one of my very favorite Marvel movies, Iron Man 3. But you compare this to any scene in Iron Man 3, it, it's, and you'll it notice just, a stark difference. It's, it's not even a really a technique. We're not, we're not even saying like the people who shot and made Iron Man 3 are not talented. They're all very, very talented. No, it's, it's, a, it's a creative decision on the part of the people who run the Marvel Cinematic Universe to like mute the colors in those movies so that they are less impactful. And I think there's like legitimate reasons to do that. Patrick made a whole video about it, check it out. Right, um, also, hey, hey, if you want another example, uh, Shang-Chi, s- shot by Bill Pope, who shot the original Matrix trilogy. Yeah, and there were some m- moments in Shang-Chi where like it was very color- colorful, but like I would say in general, uh, Superhero films look not as good as what we saw in this trailer. But that's just my opinion. If you're watching this, you might feel differently. Watch Patrick's viral video about Marvel movies looking not that great. I would re- recommend it. Okay. So I am really excited about this uh, overall. And then seeing uh, Keanu Reeves' Neo and m- maybe seeing Carrie Ann Moss' Trinity, all this stuff. Like the whole world, the aesthetic, everything I'm super into. And uh, don't, don't am- forget, there's also like... Like Jada Pinkett Smith is in this movie, but we don't see her. Indeed, there's indeed. there's like a, a lot of stuff. There's like other people who are returning who we just haven't seen yet. We don't know what they look like. Right. Uh, so one of the things I'm worried about, right? One of the things I am not psyched about is the copious references to the first movie, right? And mm-hmm. like, you know, the blue pill and the red pill, and oh, he spills the thing, the pills on the on the counter and there's all these blue pills, you know, like, and, uh, there's also like the white rabbit. You see, we see a shot of the white rabbit, uh, on yeah, a, tattoo, a, a tattoo, you know, and there's all these, there's probably going to be like all these references to the first and like, um, even the fight that they have, right. Um, like in dojo in the dojo, it's like some ver- dojo version, like a version of the dojo, but it's like a, <laughs> if this is a video game, it would be like, this is what the dojo looks like in the remastered version on the PS5, basically. Right. Right. And so I'm like, oh, not, not loving all the, cause, cause I hate kind of sequels that do too much of that. They're like, remember the thing from the earlier thing, you know, huh? Like, I'm like, oh, okay. And so th- that part does worry me that I'm worried it's going to be like, it's going to feel less like a, a sequel and more like, a companion piece, like a DVD special feature companion to the first movie. Um, right. But let's talk about the, so that, that is context for let's get to this very enigmatic scene uh, or shot from the trailer. Oh, whoops, wrong, wrong shot. I put up there. Um, 
can I actually address that that concern? Because, okay, yeah, sure, like, go ahead. I, I feel kind of similarly, but I'm not as worried about it as I think you are. Um, I think I've been burned uh, so many times by these like reboots, requels, legacy like sequels, or whatever you want to call them, where they're so enamored of what came... I mean, you made a whole video about um, uh, Rise of Skywalker, right? Was I mean, it let, let me put it this way. I don't think... Uh, so the ult I, I, I feel like uh, the ultimate uh, I guess uh, I, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the guy who's probably most responsible who, who commits this this most egregiously is JJ Abrams. And um, and that's because I think largely with his movies, JJ Abrams has very little to actually say in them other than I like that thing. Remember, like, remember that thing that that like wasn't wasn't that fun? I liked it. Here's here's the thing that like we all liked. Um, yeah, and, and, and that so that he, is the that is the worst case scenario for this movie, in my opinion, right? Right, and uh, and and that's the thing that is the sort of very empty, just like repeating of like iconography, just to to hit the easy little like dopamine hits of nostalgia because it's a thing we recognize. Yeah, and um, and I think. In terms of, if if you're looking at filmmakers who make who largely work in sort of like big populist, uh, like franchise entertainment, I think the Wachowskis are just about as far on the other end of the spectrum from J.J. Abrams as you can get. I uh, uh, yeah, I, I I don't disagree, but the issue is Patrick. There are so many shots from this trailer that feel like they're meant to evoke the first film, right? Like they they are, and I think that is a very much uh, you know, a choice on, on the part of the trailer editors to, uh, to lean very heavily mm -hmm. on the familiar stuff because they want people to remember the first movie, the one they liked, and, uh, and, and see this one. And also, in terms of like where these fall in the movie, I would, again, this, we're just making predictions here. I would predict that those probably happen early on in the movie when, like, uh -huh. b before Neo fully, like, gets brought back in when he, because again, uh, in the first movie, you've got the whole stretch of time before he finds out what the Matrix is, when he's just seeing these little things, he's trying to figure it out. And assuming that we're gonna have to go through a stretch of this movie where he's trying to figure out what's up with these dreams and stuff like that, it would kind of make sense to have, you know, to play on, to like, you know, repeat some of those, some of the imagery of like when he went through this the first time. Right. And I feel like, and, uh, but, also, I will say, as far as the dojo goes, dojos are just kind of a thing in in the Matrix in general. In uh, in um, in Final Flight of the Osiris, the mm -hmm. like pro the Animatrix oh, yeah. prologue to uh, to Reloaded, there, it opens with a dojo fight. It's like mm -hmm. I think I think that part is kind of tradition. But like again, my my short answer is I predict, and I'm not too worried that I think those will probably be mostly things early on in the movie. Yeah, and, so, uh, and it's not going to be all just recycling stuff we've seen before. I want to acknowledge some comments in the chat. Arsene Munn says, somehow Agent Smith has returned, <laughs> which I think is a great, <laughs> a great quote. Uh, Broderick Gords agrees with you. What if the repeat beats are deliberate to try and like awaken Neo? I think that's a great uh, yep. formulation. Um, but yeah, I, I, think, um, I think these are great predictions. So, um, okay. So let's get to this shot that you want to discuss. So you you think my concerns are overblown, but like in addition to White Rabbit and other, there's also like hallway shootout. There's like subway battle. There's um, helicopter scene in the you know. So there's all these well, beats that seem like they're meant to evoke the first film. Maybe the movie won't be too enamored of it, but it's a danger of mine. Go ahead, Patrick. Well, okay. First of all, um, I don't think like there's a. So a, a scene in a hallway in the first Matrix, but I don't think like the Matrix is like a hallway is up here all over the place. Like I don't think like having a fight, having an action scene involve a hallway is too much. Like like you know th that's not so tied to the first movie. The hell uh, I don't I didn't see any like hell it's an action movie. There are helicopters. Uh, <laughs> also, it's not a subway. There it is a train going outside mm. with like explosions happening. That that thing, whatever it is, and it looks to me, and uh, not to be like one of the like going through frame by frame. Let's 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 
you know, parse every single millisecond of this. But it looked kind of like that, uh, because there's a part where they go through like a doorway of light, uh, like on, on the roof of a building, and then seem to be like traveling through mirrors, which is also is like a new thing, not like we saw in the original movies. Right, but uh, right. it looked kind of like, uh, at least the way it's edited, when you have this scene of a SWAT team shooting up some room that is projecting uh, the the first movie on a screen, specifically the scene where uh, Neo is like first exiting the Matrix into the real world and he like touches the mirror and it goes down his throat. Mm -hmm. um, it looks kind of like a there like a doorway or like uh, like a doorway opens up into the train from there. It's, it's if like I'm wondering if there's like sort of a uh, this new dynamic in this movie uh, uh, where um, you know people can track like well I mean I shouldn't say new dynamic um, in Reloaded they introduced that like with the Keymaster the hallway of doors uh, and you can travel into all these spots within yeah. the Matrix through these doors I wonder if it's kind of like an extension of that with people being able to like travel through mirrors are these doors of light to uh to like jump around and like you know just just get to different places and uh and yeah uh anyway this shot of the first movie like what is going on yeah so well, marcus uh in the chats in, in uh like speculates maybe there's multiple levels of the matrix and the mirrors are the doorways between them that seems plausible to me yeah um but okay let's get to the shot of the first movie right mm-hmm is it this one? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so in the movie, there appears to be a, a shot in which we see a scene from the first film projected on the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, Putty in the chat room says, the images of the original movie being played on screens here seem to be from inside the Matrix. I imagine the machines back all their data up. I doubt they'll play anything from outside of Zion. Um, I mean, okay. So here, here's the big thing that I that it makes me because because the shot that we see from the Matrix One, theoretically in the universe of that film, takes place from outside of the Matrix, right? Because isn't it a shot of? Oh no 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 no! This is the one of Neo getting engulfed in the liquidy yeah. thing. Okay, so it is. Yes. It could be in inside the Matrix. Got it. Okay, but I think here is the important thing. I. Uh, this is not a case of like, you know, the machines had like secret cameras. Uh, and it, like, it's not just showing like an event from the first movie, it's straight up footage of the mm -hmm. first movie, mm -hmm. which makes me wonder, in this movie, when uh, at least at the beginning, Thomas Anderson is like, I don't know, dreaming about the Matrix. This is, this is, crazy but hear hear me out what if in this world the matrix movies exist as movies yeah i let me just tell you i think that's extremely possible and the reason i think that this is information that i shouldn't uh let's just say i i know someone con who is tangentially connected with the production of the matrix resurrections uh-huh um and extremely vague plot details this person gave me indicate that there's some kind of meta component to it uh that may fit with what you're saying now it's so i the information i have is so vague that i barely shouldn't even be i'm i'm coming off like someone who's completely making this up but like let's just say i have heard information that seems to match if not with what you're saying, then with the spirit of what you're saying, basically that like that th this movie may exist in a universe in which if not the matrix uh, trilogy are movies, then the events of the matrix are widely known. So anyway, I'm just going to say, if you're concerned about this, just being like an easy <laughs> rehash of the first one, that does not sound like, that sounds so weird. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so p people in the chat room, by the way, extremely skeptical, as you should be. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I will, I will, I will 
relent from that. But your your speculation was that there is, um, and by the way, like I'm being extremely vague so that I don't reveal any information. Uh, although I realize that by being extremely vague, it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about, which is completely fine. I I, I accept your judgment. Um, so what if the Matrix are movies? Because I think the th here's the here's the problem with the that theory though, Patrick is. Tell me if this is a pet peeve for you. You're watching a movie. You're watching a movie or TV show, and in the universe of the movie or TV show, they show a piece of media that they've made, <laughs> right? Uh, that the characters in the movie or TV show have made, but it's done using like camera angles that were like impossible or like equipment that was like they shouldn't have had. Do you know what I'm saying? And yes. so, but what I'm what I'm the reason I'm saying all this is basically watching a uh, scene from the Matrix 1 projected on a wall in the trailer of this movie, it is indistinguishable because of the way movies work in general. You can't tell whether that's actually a scene from the Matrix 1 or it was camera footage that someone took or made that happens to look like what we perceive as the Matrix 1. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like in the universe of Matrix Resurrections, maybe like some guy filmed this or made this, and it just happens to look like the Matrix one. I know. Um, recently, yeah. I, I, David, do you follow Todd Vaziri on Twitter? I do. I do. I, uh, I, uh, so Todd Vaziri, I, uh, uh, VFX artist at at ILM, uh, great guy. Everyone should follow him if you don't. But I, uh, his Twitter feed is great because he'll, he'll like often go on these threads, like breaking down, like you know. Like uh, some like uh, filmmaking technique in a movie, or like how a VFX shot was done, or something like that. But recently, he had a thread complaining about a pet peeve of his, <laughs> which is when in movies, uh, actual footage from the movie is used as like I know. news footage I or, hate or I like hate security it. camera footage. I hate it. And I at, right, that's the thing. I'm always like. No, a security camera is be is like this like way lower resolution like different kind of camera. It's not they they did not have a thirty five millimeter film camera with like I don't know an like an Arri Master Prime lens on it. Like <laughs> like if you're gonna shoot security camera footage, shoot security camera footage. Um, and so that's kind of what I think about with with this, where I'm like, honestly, maybe this is that that kind of pet peeve. Yes, where exactly. uh, where exactly. is that kind of thing? Now, uh, now, but also uh, like again, this movie. No, looking at like like knowing the people involved in it, whether it's uh, Lon Wachowski or David Mitchell, and like their past work, this movie could be so many things, and this scene could be so many things, and so I just don't know. Yeah, uh, there was also another uh, screenshot that somebody, Broderick in the chat, wanted me to mention or uh, wanted to point out, I guess. I don't know if he wanted me to mention it, but um, you see a shot of Neo in the movie of Matrix Resurrections, but, and then behind him is being projected. This, this does not look like a shootout. It looks like behind him is a projection of an, another scene from The Matrix 1. So it um, could either be... Where does this happen in the trailer? It's like 103 into the trailer. I'm going to text it to you. Uh, so you I, 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 I've, I've got the trailer on my computer. Yeah. I'm literally... I, ju I just texted it to you. If you oh, oh, you have... Um, you're using your phone for something else, probably. Oh, so. oh yep, 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 yeah. yep. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, I, I see it. He's staring at a mirror. And yeah. then and then 1999 Neo is behind him. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm so curious. Yeah. I... Uh, yeah, and, and then you've also got the stuff of like him looking in mirrors and having like r r immediately right after that, like a, a flashes of his like older self, like looking back at him, as he's like, like uh, you know, just changing in age, like his you know digital self image seems yeah. to be shifting. Yeah. Uh, also, Broderick wants me to point out he's only highlighting Putty's comment. He wasn't actually making the comment, so I apologize, Putty. That you were the original commenter there. Um, so one of the things that, uh, let's see, what else do we want to talk about? There's just a lot of comments in the chat. We got like 500 people watching live right now, FYI. Um, so Hi, is there, yes, hello. Uh, 
is so is there anything else in the trailer that you want to discuss? One one thing I want to mention is we do see a few shots of Jessica Henwick in the trailer. She looks great. Look, looks looking really cool. Freaking amazing badass. I can't wait for the world to learn about Jessica Henwick because she's going to be awesome. Um, Sarah by the everyone's favorite show, Iron Fist. I know she's. This is what I'm saying, Patrick. Like the 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 universe owes her a karmic debt after Iron Fist, and I hope that the Matrix Resurrections is how it grants it to her, uh, because she she needs like <laughs> she deserves to be in a better property than Iron Fist because Iron Fist was terrible. Uh, yeah, I I only saw one episode. Uh, so. Yeah, I, 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 I also I only fine. watched like two episodes, and they were horrible. Were they not? Do you do you agree with me? Uh, I, what I saw just seemed like deeply mediocre. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say like horrible. I was just like, <laughs> like, like yeah. it, it, it elicited so little reaction from me. I just wasn't compelled to watch. I wasn't like I'm quitting this. It's awful. I'm just like I just don't care. By the way, in the chat, there's a couple of other speculations for why they might be showing the tr uh, the footage from the first film um, mm -hmm. that I want to highlight. Reynaldo says, maybe that shot is him remembering and they play footage on the wall behind him as just an aesthetic choice for the memory. Uh, unlikely, unlikely, because it's so persistent, right? Like it's, there's multiple things, right? multiple shots of it, right? So I, I don't know. I mean, obviously like this is happening right when he's looking at a mirror and having his appearance like, like shift and warp. So it's definitely like things are up with reality Yes. Um, no. Totally also, agree I, with that part. Totally agree with that. I part. do. I just. I do want, just want to mention. Uh, uh, things are looking up for Jessica Henwick because uh, she's also in Knives Out too. Mm. Uh, so. Yes. You know, th th uh, she's she's really doing a lot better than. She's on the up and up. On the up and up. Um, the Neurodiversity Academy speculates parallel universes, maybe. Um, uh, people in the chat are also bringing up the TV. Whoop, the TV screens in the architect scene, as like. Kind of like maybe this is a reference of that, um, so yeah, it's may, maybe the footage exists as a way of for Neo to remind himself of his life in some weird way. I think these are all like great speculations. So yeah, uh, all all very interesting and all also you know totally valid, and I I believe any of them. And a thing that I I do just keep wondering about is, I uh, because you know presumably several years have passed in this world since revolutions ended and revolutions ended with a sort of like uh like armistice between the humans and the machines mm -hmm. uh and so i'm just wondering like what will have happened to you know you know cause all of this because it certainly looks like uh you know there's agents there and People shooting at each other, and uh, and so I'm just, I'm just like 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 what happened? What is the state of the real world? Is it uh is it is it is it gonna be? Again, I think you know I I I I trust Lana Wachowski more than this, but like, will it just be kind of like a Force Awakens thing where it's like, oops, no, didn't really end, just kind of went back to exactly the way it was before. Um, I don't think it'll be that. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah, yeah. That's what this whole thing is. That's all, uh, so I am Jay Hill in the chat says, uh, Jonathan Groff has to be the new Smith, right? We saw some shots in the trailer of Jonathan Groff playing an agent of some kind. Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you see this? Wait, as an agent? I think so. Is it, I, I'm pretty sure that's him. That's really? It, it, it's, it's hard to tell. It's, it's, it's not 100% clear. It might be him. It might well, be him. Well, okay. If it's him, so that what that raises a very interesting question, uh, because when you see him in in the last scene, uh, so you know when, when he's saying after all these years, uh, you know, going back back to the Matrix, but him in the in the last scene clearly has way more of a personality than agents traditionally have. Uh, so the idea of him appearing as like seemingly a regular person and then also an agent. That's a thing that we've never seen before, and I'm mm. curious about. Also, in the last scene, and may, not, this, not this shot may this shot may not be him. So apologies if that it's it's hard to tell, but apologies if that's the case. We're doing this without a net, folks. Anyway, uh, we go are ahead. Um, on. So in the last scene, uh, and I don't know if this is deliberate or anything like that, but I like the idea that the trailer opens with 
Keanu talking to Neil Patrick Harris. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. And NPH is on the left of the screen. Mm -hmm. And then the trailer ends with him talking to Jonathan Groff, who's on the right. And it kind of bookends it. Mm. Uh, You have like the symmetry to it. Um, But Jonathan Groff is in an office, like a big like office building. And there's this, uh, what looks like something with an M logo on his desk. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, is uh, Thomas Anderson back at work at Metacortex where he worked in the first movie? And is Jonathan Groff uh, like an executive at Metacortex? It's possible. The the logo also has kind of like a D look to it though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it does. It doesn't look quite like a me- like if you're like this is a meta cortex logo i would not quite believe you but maybe you're right well you no, no, you, you, uh, are you looking at the same screenshot that i am because it looks like there's an there's an m yeah and, like and uh and then it all uh like like the, it's the like shape surrounded the, by a d though right yeah and yeah. um oh, but can i throw out this uh absurd theory that i have had uh for the past like year or so about this uh, movie. Yeah, yes, but this is we are 50 minutes into this conversation about a 2 minute trailer. Of course you can throw out a theory. Excellent. <laughs> excellent. Uh so um based on the casting of Neil Patrick Harris and Jonathan Groff. Mm-hmm. Two people who have extensive Broadway theater experience. <laughs> my theory is that there is going to be a musical number in this movie. Mm. Mm. All right, man. You, 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 and I have both thrown down a bunch of predictions that like might not end up being true. But you oh know, yeah, we're, and, we're pretty... and look, this is not one of those things where I'm like, I have a clear idea of what I, exactly I think this movie needs to be, and if it does not meet my mental, my, my digital self image of the Matrix Four that I want to see, then I'll be disappointed. No, I if, if I'm wrong about all this stuff, cool. I I don't care. I'm just like. I'm so excited to look at this and be like, it could be anything. I have no idea what's going to happen in this. Uh, this is not just going to like check off a bunch of beats that I that I'm like expecting, uh, and just you know, kind of like, like it's you know, it's it's not. It, it could be anything. Uh, it could be a disaster. It could be a masterpiece. I I have no idea, and I'm just we we never get this this anymore with a movie with like a you know a, a, a franchise movie of this scale and i'm just it feels and, so and, good. and a director that is clearly very talented right like yeah certainly certainly has made bad movies before but has the potential to make amazing movies and so it's like ooh, so much potential here so much possibility here philippe in the chat says is it possible that the matrix is some sort of company or entity that exists inside the matrix Hence yeah, the sure. Logo. Anyth- anything's possible. Who knows? I believe it. Yeah. Okay, folks. I think we are winding down here. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up, and we'll put them on the screen and we'll talk about them. But um, there's been a lot of questions in the chat about whether we think this is the start of a new trilogy. Obviously, Patrick and I barely can even agree on what the plot might be, so we can only even begin to speculate on whether this is the beginning of a new trilogy. Um, if it does well, it seems possible, but I don't know. I feel like the circumstances behind the making of the original Matrix trilogy are basically unreplicable today, right? Um, Matrix 1 was a huge surprise hit, and then they made 2 and 3 back-to-back. Like, I think I... Matrix Resurrections could do well, but I don't know where what things with in the country are going to look like with covid and delta and movie going when this movie comes out in december um what their even criteria is for a hit like is it if like five million people stream it on hbo max that's a hit like uh unclear as to like what their plans are patrick go ahead you had some thoughts i personally and this is this has less to do with the movie itself and more just thinking about you know what Lana Wachowski wants to do. Uh, I I do not expect this is the start of a new trilogy. I feel like this is sort of like just like a one-off return, almost like you could even say like a coda. Mm. Uh, may, may, yeah, you know, kind of like the Godfather coda, the death of Michael Corleone, just kind of like a several years later, like 
a, a like like a reflection a, a, and, a and denouement, as it were, right? Exactly. A... Uh, and and also, I think this is the kind of thing where this movie again hard to say like where what the theater situation will be like when what the COVID situation will be like. But uh, I think there's a decent chance uh, people seem pretty amped uh, for just about a new Matrix movie, and people seem excited about this new trailer. Um, I think there's a decent chance this movie could, even if people don't like it, uh, it could make a lot of money. And um, and then as kind of like a smart career decision, I could see uh, Lana Wachowski being like, great, I'm excited about this Matrix movie, got something to say, make this, and then, ooh, new doors open to make more projects. Now that I, I gave you the franchise movie you wanted, now, now let me make more cloud atlases. Right. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the purposes of Lega sequels is to hand off the franchise to newcomers, right? So there is a... You, you're, I think you're right. Let me just say, I think what Patrick said... Patrick, you've been going on with strong theories this entire thing, okay? I got I got nothing close to what you got in terms of the strong theories. But uh, if we think of like what a typical Lego sequel can be, it's like, hey... Um, Han Solo's dead. He's handing off the adventures to a new generation of people. You know, that's that's what the story is. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible that this w could be a way of like Neo handing it off to like the next generation of Matrix. Neo and Trinity handing it off to the next generation of Matrix people. Uh, I feel like I'm not sure about that because like the other characters in that we saw were like Jessica Henwick and uh Yahya Abdul Mateen the second and I feel like those characters analogs are like the key maker and oh not the key maker uh who's the guy Seraph right the Seraph the Seraph and then young young Morpheus like they could be unrelated to those characters at all but it felt to me like the trailer was trying to like visually evoke them in some ways mm -hmm. um but if they are like maybe they are like the next you know, Matrix adventurers in some way. Like, it's possible that it could be setting them up to be, you know, the next uh, people to carry on the Matrix mantle. Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Well, I mean, the, the thing... You're, cover you're I, covering your mic, by the way. I, uh, I, I am yeah. covering my mic. It. <laughs> I never saw the Matrix as, like, a Star Wars kind of, like, myth thing that kind of carries on forever. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so I like I I would be very surprised if the movie ends with like, you know, and now you guys are the stars. And then <laughs> the, Lana like passes it to like another filmmaker to be like, keep making Matrix movies forever. And it's like th these feel so personal. Yeah. Uh, and so I would I mean, y y again, we have no idea, but. But I have one thing. I have, I, I have one one thought. I mean, not that uh -huh. we have to end it right here, but if we're if we're if we're you know kind of winding down. Yes. One thing that I I I, I keep thinking about. <laughs> uh huh. What's that? When are we gonna find out what the Merovingian is up to? So my understanding is that actor is in this movie. Yes, I know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I. Uh, I I mean I'm excited about everything, but I am so excited for Neo to pay a visit to uh, to Merv, and uh, I, is is Club Hell still open? Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't know I don't know has has he been gorging on his orgasm cake? I don't know. <laughs> Anything's possible. I can't I can't wait to see the Merovingian. I mean, I th I think that is the, the 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 number one biggest question in this movie is what is People going on with Merovingian. Like that's the, the 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 fans demand to know what the fate of the Merovingian is. So of course, yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah that that's what everyone's asking. Let's let's get the hashtag going. Uh, where's the Merovingian? Yeah. Um. Okay, there's one other thing that people have brought up that I think is kind of interesting. Uh, Cheltenham ninety eight. Uh, says, if the Matrix sequels were about how revolution becomes useless when dictated by the ruling class boundaries, then maybe repetition of old scenes is actually something they have to escape. This is something I saw online as well, like people talking about how maybe the Matrix is going to be some kind of commentary 
vol like inadvertently or advertently <laughs> about the inescapability of blockbuster filmmaking in the modern era, which I think is kind of a potentially fascinating thing to contemplate is like if they are in fact direct references to the first movie then you know there's going to be a shot of neo being like there's something there's something very familiar about all this you know and like trying to escape from them and that, that, that may be some kind of like there's a lot of meta territory there to mine so um okay i yeah i i would totally believe that uh and that that actually sounds pretty exciting yeah okay well we've been talking about this for an hour uh, we have been at times very coherent, at times completely nonsensical, but it's it's been a blast to chat with you about it. And if you uh, are enjoying this, uh, there's many ways you can get more of mine and Patrick's work. First thing you can do, subscribe to our YouTube channels. Uh, you're already on this one. Just hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. Check out Patrick's work at Patrick H. Willems on YouTube. And also, uh, if you want the audio podcast version of this and many other bonus uh, audio episodes that I'm producing, uh, check out patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Uh, that's where I put all of my cool, exclusive stuff online. Um, but Patrick, it has been a blast. I hope you have enjoyed this conversation and geeking out with me about this. And like, I, I, what's going to be awesome is like 99% of what we say today is probably going to be completely wrong. Um, and I love that. And that's, that's the most fun part of this. You know, people, people in the chat, I feel like are taking this way more seriously than us, <laughs> which is like, cause we're like, they're like, no, that couldn't possibly. Be right. It's like, I think I would say that most of what we've said is wrong today. Uh, but it's fun to speculate and like think about what might be true. And I appreciate everyone in the chat kind of like really engaging with this exercise. And um, I hope you had a good time as well, Patrick. I had a great time, David. Thank you so much for having me. And the last thing I want to say is um, I, I really hope that as sort of like a, uh, a weird interactive promotion thing for this movie, they um, actually open up uh, Simulate uh, coffee shops in different cities so I can go to one. Indeed. You know, you, you say that as a joke, but there is a... Uh, oh, I'm, uh, I mean, I, it's a joke, but I'm, I'm also serious. I want, the, I want to go to Simulate. There is a Corky's Massage Spa and Salon in the, uh, in the trailer for The Matrix Resurrections, uh, which is perceived to be a reference to Corky, Gina Gershon's character in the neo-noir film Bound. So, Good movie. Yeah. Um, okay. Just a, just a final little reference there for you. Yeah. Uh, thanks again. And yeah, uh, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon if you enjoyed uh, this video and want more videos like it. And we'll see you in the next one. Yeah.